Dad was funny. <laughs> he always liked to joke around. Dad's um, faith was very, very strong. Um, he started a church with his father and four other families. Mom was the most supportive the person that I could think of. They did everything together. They were inseparable. They fished together. They used to come down and visit me down in Alabama, and they'd come and spend the winter. Anybody that you would ask that knew her just said that she was the sweetest person, and she was always there for any of us, grandkids, kids, any of us. So in November of 2013, um, Ellen was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And um, she was determined she was going to beat it. She was, you know, really was strong in her faith and thought that she was going to try everything possible. Over time, um, it got to where she, she was getting pretty sick and it came to the point um, she, she went to hospice. And I know Fred and Ellen were very thankful that they were able to get hospice because um, Dr. Richardson and the nurses and that were there and they, they worked so well with, with her, very caring, very understanding, and wanted to meet the needs of her and the family. Dad had been sick for a while. He had congestive heart failure and um, diabetes. But after mom passed, he seemed to fail more. His kidneys, he started, um, were not functioning, and they wanted him to go on dialysis. Dialysis wasn't working for him. He's in a lot of pain, and it got to the point where he just decided at the hospital, he says, I, I'm done. I want to go be with Mom. He came home at 10.30 on a Saturday, and he passed away that night at home. But um, hospice had everything ready for us when we brought him home that day. And they were almost with us the entire time. Mm -hmm. They hadn't gone home very long before we had to give the call. Dad passed away about eight months after Mom did. Mark was um, a very friendly, outgoing, Person. He was a joy to be around. He um, would always tell jokes. Um, he was, he would do anything for anybody too. He was a very caring individual. We did a lot of camping <laughs> and we used to call him kidnappings. He was very involved with this work. He, whatever he did, he gave 110 percent and he was a sales rep and so he was on the road. He was always home every night but he put in a lot of miles and so he'd have to work when he came home and it was hard for him to relax and unwind and at the age of 50 he had um, open heart surgery so it was important for him to take some downtime and so he'd come home on a Friday and I'd have the car all packed and I'd just be like get in the car it's a kidnapping and he'd have no idea where he was going or anything but We'd try to do that about once a month. He was born and raised in Tennessee, and um, that's where we met. And um, we lived there for several years. But Mark, with his heart, um, because he had a big challenge ahead of him after his open heart, he had cholesterol that was so high it was off of the charts. They just always told me he was a walking time bomb. Within two years of his first open heart surgery, one of his arteries was already concrete. They couldn't do anything with. So we needed to get him to relax more and, and see what we could do, so he retired. And we took a job with the company that I was working for, and we opened up a Christian book and gift store down in Alabama, near Gulf Shores. So we were down by the beach. And so we worked side by side for four years. It was, it was great. <laughs> we really enjoyed our time together. And 
The second year we had the store, he was having problems making change at the cash register. And um, by two o'clock in the afternoon, people made him nervous and he didn't like being around people. And that was very unusual for him. And so we had um, gone and had him tested. His mom and dad both had Alzheimer's and he had early onset Alzheimer's. So between the heart disease and the early onset Alzheimer's, they had told me that whatever was on his bucket list, we needed to get that done. By 2012, um, he wanted to go to Virginia to see our daughter and grandkids. He wanted to have some good memories with them before he couldn't remember anymore. But he went downhill pretty fast. And um, I was to the point where I didn't know what to do. I was having a hard time working and taking care of him. And so I finally quit the job. And I went to a medical fair that was there in town. And I was talking to some people there and they said, you know, your husband would probably fall in line with hospice. And I said, oh, no, 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 he's not ready to go. And they said, that's not what hospice is about. Hospice is about him getting the care he needs when there's nothing else that can be done. And so they came in, and we went through all the questions. And because of his heart and where it was at, um, the percentage that was working, he fell in line with hospice, and that's how we got started. In 2014, we um, moved to Tennessee because that's where his family was, and his brother could help me because Mark had had a, another major stroke, and for two months, he didn't even know who I was, and it was hard. Um, probably the hardest thing I've ever done is keeping him going and, and um, pretty much 24-7 you couldn't sleep because you never knew what he was going to do. And um, so we moved to Tennessee to be close to his brother and also then I could come home and see my mom because I knew she was struggling with the pancreatic cancer. So we did that and I came home a couple times um, to stay with mom for a week and a half and then he'd stay with his brother, but hospice would go into their house and um, still see him on their regular visits. Um, and then his dad passed away. And um, the day after the funeral, Jenny called me and said, Mom doesn't have much more time. So... <laughs> I called hospice and they said, we'll take care of you. They set everything up in Monroe for us. And um, we got in the car and a day and a half later, we were up with mom and hospice was seeing my husband there. And then um, mom passed uh, a week later and um, then they took care of Mark still the whole time we stayed there so we were married um, 18 years before he passed but we were like soulmates 